car for the street. There are many cars that claim to be that, but the Lamborghini Huracan STO may be the one that gets the closest. Yes, we have things like an Aero Atom or a BAC Mono, but those things are pretty much fully race cars. They're not even remotely streetable. This here is still a Huracan, but it's the STO, the most ultimate hardcore iteration of the Huracan lineup. STO stands for Super Trofeo Omologata, which I probably butchered the Italian pronunciation, but I'm not Italian. This thing is effectively a Super Trofeo GT3 race car that is road legal. So as a Huracan, it has a 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10 that makes 631 horsepower and 417 pound-feet of torque. The STO is rear-wheel drive, which is a big change from the Huracan Performante, and it has rear-wheel steering, and it has a fixed steering ratio, so it's designed to be a lot more sporty. Still has that 7-speed dual clutch. 0-60 to 60 is claimed in 3 seconds, but has been tested in under 3 seconds. This is not set up for straight line speed and top speed though. This is a handling performance car, so weight and aerodynamics is a huge focus. Dry weight is quoted at 1,339 kilograms, which is 43 kilograms lighter than the Performante. Rear wheel test has shown it to be just over 3,300 pounds, but weight saving measures versus the Performante. The windshield is 20% lighter. Almost 75% of the body panels on a Huracan STO are made from carbon fiber and they're bespoke and much more aggressive. Talking about the aerodynamics, they call it the Cofango or something like that, the front end aero. So we have all sorts of intakes and ducts and brake cooling ducts and functional vents here on the fenders to lower the pressure and channel air where you want it to go. That snorkel right there, the intake is functional. The NACA ducts on the side are what feed the engine. We have a three-stage manual adjustable rear wing, which is just epic. All carbon fiber. It provides all sorts of uh, aerodynamic vectoring and things like that. We have a shark fin in the back too, which is again for aerodynamics. The whole car is styled functionally. It looks absolutely like a race car for the road. The spec on this one is also very unique. Factory matte green paint with the orange accents all over and exposed carbon fiber. We've got huge carbon ceramic brakes with orange calipers here. This thing really does make the Performante look quite tame in comparison. We're currently in Michigan right now where the roads are mainly just straight lines and we will get to test the handling by avoiding potholes, but not on a racetrack, which is where you really need to get this to truly explore the limits. But this is gonna be a real world drive and experience with the Huracan STO, which I'm excited for because I've spent time in the regular Huracan Performante. I personally have a Gen 2 R8 RWS, which is rear wheel drive, but that's like the lowest tier, like re reduced version of what this is. This is the most extreme possible iteration of the rear wheel drive Lamborghini slash R8 V10 platform. So we're gonna take it for a drive, talk about the interior, what it's like to drive in the value. All right, in the car and let's head off. We went into Trofeo mode cause it's dry and warm out. Putting the front lift up to get out of this parking lot. <laughs> Enjoy that V10. <laughs> oh my gosh. So let's talk about the interior of the Huracan STO. If you've been in a newer generation Huracan Evo or Performante, a lot of it's going to feel quite similar. It does have the Evo center touchscreen, so that's much more updated. It actually works pretty well, full digital cluster, but then the rest of it, it's like, it's the race Lamborghini Huracan, right? So full carbon fiber door panels. It's all exposed carbon fiber weave. You don't even get an actual door handle. You have the little red cloth strap pull and a little like leather Alcantara carbon fiber uh, little door handle there. So lightweight is the goal. This is the most extreme race oriented one. The carbon fiber race buckets has some exposed carbon, more of the suede orange accents all over the interior of this one to kind of tie the whole theme together. We have the STO embroidered along with the Huracan or the Lamborghini logo on the headrest themselves fire extinguisher back there. A lot of orange accents too. Even the uh, the start stop button cover here is orange instead of red, orange stitching, Alcantara. In terms of interior space, it's less practical and comfortable than my R8 because it's the Huracan. Your visibility isn't quite as good, but it's very nicely finished in here. But enough about the interior. This is all about driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
holy crap. You feel and hear everything so much more in this thing. Less sound deadening, the engine back there. This makes my R8 feel tame. It makes a regular Huracan feel tame. Wow, we have magnetic ride dampers. And again, everything is just tuned to be much more sporty and aggressive. The shifts, listen to these sound shifts. Instant. Oh my gosh. Down shifts. With the huge fixed paddle shifters. And it just sounds so good. This V10 is glorious. I spent some time in a Huracan Performante and that kind of solidified me wanting this V10 again. That's why I bought my R8. I was cross shopping with an AMG GTR, a 911 Turbo S, but this naturally aspirated V10, the way it delivers the power, the sound, the emotion, the excitement, Yes, a 720S may be faster in a straight line, but it doesn't bring the same experience that this does, and this is the ultimate iteration. Now, the Performante is a better all-around supercar. It's still very capable, it's more livable. I think the, the appearance is a little more uh, reasonable. This is straight up like a race car, it's so extreme. But, I mean, this is just the next level of ridiculousness. There's no concessions to practicality. The front trunk is non-existent. You can fit like a helmet in there if you have a small head. Um, to open it, it's all carbon fiber. You have to unscrew both sides and it hinges forward. This massive carbon fiber clamshell. 75% of the body panels are carbon fiber and they actually were able to reduce the weight somehow and still maintain structural rigidity with improving new technology. Looking out the rear view window, the side mirrors, everything is so extreme. You see these just vents and just widened bodied pieces and the, the aero cover on the trunk is just ridiculous. Looking out of this car, the side view mirrors, you see this massive flared rear wheel arches. Looking out the rear view mirror, you just have like the vented engine cover, which gives this just crazy feeling to it. Man, and being a Huracan, I have to like do this to be able to see the, the light because right now if I sit up straight, I have no idea what the traffic light is showing me. <laughs> you have to drive this on the racetrack to truly experience, and I'm not getting anywhere close to the limits of this. One thing I did notice that was interesting is uh, it doesn't have Pirellis. This thing is on Bridgestones. So they must be really, really good for Lamborghini as an Italian company to not use Italian tires, Pirellis. I looked at them earlier, there's like no tread on them. They're just, they're race tires. Everything is retuned to make it sharper and more aggressive. The throttle response, the shifts, the way the engine feels. Ultimate power didn't have to increase by much because they lowered weight and just made it more aggressive. Rear wheel steering, Let's see, just taking this turn. Oh. <laughs> In trofeo mode, it firms up and there's a wet mode called uh, P P o P o G a P a I can't speak Italian. What performance? But I'm gonna go back to Trofeo or STO mode, which is Super Trofeo Omologata. Uh, but Trofeo, I think, is the fun mode here. Got the huge tachometer sweep across your entire center cluster. This is essentially like the GT3 RS versus the GT3, that treatment. But honestly, I think it takes it even a step further. Wow. All right, we've got a little bit of an overpass tunnel. So I think we gotta like lower the windows and hear this V10 a little bit. <laughs> All right, it's rear wheel drive. I'm not gonna use launch control, but what if I stomp on it? <laughs> Got the traction light flashing a bit. <laughs> Dodging potholes, welcome to Michigan. There's another one. Oh, the instantaneousness. This makes my R8 feel sloppy. There's so much more like bandwidth and play with the R8 versus this, which the R8's already a pretty cool sports car, but that feels like a, a luxury daily driver compared to this thing. If you've been in a regular Huracan, a lot of this is likely going to feel pretty similar to you, um, just more extreme. So let's talk about value. Obviously, this is expensive. It's a, it's a Huracan STO. Um, Oh man, that's bouncy. Uh, base price is 330,000-ish. 
with options, you can get them to well into the fours. I think this one has a lot of ad personum options, so it's, I think, close to five. The thing is, with the market and the insanity of the market, I see most of these selling for like five to six hundred thousand dollars right now. Is that worth it? I mean, if you have the money, I would get one because it's going to be one of the last V10s. Well, actually, I thought it was going to be the last V10 Huracan, and then Lamborghini went and built the Technica. Ooh, the brakes, too. <laughs> the Technica is effectively this and the Evo kind of merged halfway through. So a more livable version of the STO. It is rear-wheel drive. It doesn't have quite the insane aero and not quite as extreme. But I wouldn't be surprised if we get another one to two more iterations of the Huracan. Look at how many there were for the Gallardo. We had the Super Trofeo Stradale after the Performante, a uh, Spider Performante and the Super Leggera. So if we get a couple more, I wouldn't be surprised. Am I sad about it? Not really, because this V10 is so glorious. And the more that we can have, the happier I am as a, as a car enthusiast. So in terms of value, will these hold the prices they're going at maybe not long term but i mean that's what they command right now and for the most extreme iteration uh if you have the funds for it it's a top tier dog this this makes a performante look tame but what would i rather own this or a performante i think performante because all wheel drive i think it looks a little cleaner less aggressive but visually prettier to me and it has some more of the nice uh amenities I, uh, actually it doesn't really have that many more amenities it's still a performante and this has a screen that's eh, a toss-up, but it has at least a front trunk you can put more than a backpack into, so that's uh, much more practical compared to the Huracan STO. So final thoughts on the STO. This spec looks so good in person. When my friend Alec first showed me pictures of it, I was like, ah, uh, does the matte green really work with the orange? But in person, man, it looks good. The presence of this thing, it honestly looks like they took the Super Trofeo race car and just translated to road use. They got rid of some of the stickers and went like, all right, we are done. The rear wing is insane. It's got the three stages. You can see the layers to it. The shark fin is crazy. The front hood, when it hinges up, it looks like a spaceship. This thing is definitely one of the most aggressive looking cars in the world. Oh, we're going through the tunnel again. Let me open the window slightly. Yeah. Ready? Ready for V10 goodness? <laughs> oh, it's just inst instantaneous. It's making me struggle with my words. I need a tune for the engine and transmission on my R8 because it feels tame in comparison. My R8 has a titanium exhaust now, which sounds really good, but oh man, I'm gonna go back into STO mode. The mag right dampers do soften up a bit. What a machine. Yeah. <laughs> You can't really rationally justify a car like this. I mean, it's an emotional purchase. Is it twice as good as a regular Huracan? I don't, I don't know if you could argue that. On a track, maybe you'll get those last couple of tenths. The experience is more visceral. So if that's what you're looking for, go for it. If you have access to a track, I think you would truly be able to appreciate this car and get to utilize it. Because it is as close as you pretty much get to a race car that is still street legal that you can register. This V10 is just so amazing. I personally love it so much that I've owned two 5.2 liter V10. I'm in the Audi R8 price bracket, not the Huracan one, but it's a little more practical and spacious for me. I mean, I fit in this, I'm comfortable. Six foot three, I would be able to, I mean, I'm fine driving it now, but if you asked me to take this on a road trip, I'd be like, um, uh, um, can we trailer it? Because again, it's so extreme. I mean, you hear all the noises, you hear the engine back there, and for a visceral experience, it's good. To daily drive, uh, it's a little extreme, right? But <laughs> what a car, what a car, what an experience. Wow. There it is, a quick real world review of the Huracan STO. <laughs> if you told me when I was a high schooler that I get to drive cars like this and I had friends who would just hand me the keys and let me take it for a spin and experience it, I would I would be like, really? Cool, can I get to that point now? Wow. And right next to me, I've got Steve. 
with the oldest of the Lamborghini V10s. That's a Gen 1 Gallardo with a gated manual. And this is the newest of the V10s. So we've got the two Lamborghini V10s together. Such different cars. I mean, this is a super quick dual clutch transmission, all the insane aero. That thing is a dinosaur in comparison. I just said your car is technically a dinosaur in comparison. <laughs> but I would say that V10 with the exhaust he has on it has like this high pitched scream that the Huracan 5.2 can't match. And his is the gated manual. So a whole different kind of experience. This is much more capable, newer and so forth. But these cars just, they're poster cars, literally driving a poster car. That's what Lamborghini accomplishes better than I think almost any other car company out there. Short of like Koenigsegg, Bugatti and Pagani. So there it is, Huracan STO, a quick review. What a crazy, crazy machine. We'll do an ownership video with Alec. <laughs> I could do that all day long. Oh my gosh. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video because I certainly enjoyed driving this car. Thanks for watching. Ooh, there's an event store up there. Oh, it's an SV. Oh, dang, that car is cool.